Hi everyone, this is David with Tigner Adventures and this is our final video in this series. We have come a long ways over the last couple videos talking about trip planning for this summer. You can use anything if you want to just do a little road trip going from here to there, you know, point A to point B. But when it comes down to planning something, RV Life has a product called Trip Wizard that really is the Cadillac of software that's available for planning out your trip. In today's video, we're going to be talking about features that are in Trip Wizard that will make your life a lot easier as you plan out your trip. Whoa, it's time to end this series. We need to get done and get going so I can wash this shirt. In our last video, we talked about how to uh, find things on the internet, all the quirky little things out there, other camping places, places like Harvest Host, uh, places like Elks Lodges and things, how to enter all that information into uh, Trip Wizard. Uh, the video before that, we talked about how to make reservations because we're already getting to that point where we need to make reservations for the coming season. And we made our reservation for our ferry ride over to uh, Newfoundland. This is December and it was almost all booked up. So it's, you know, important to get things going as quick as we can. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about all the cool things that RV um, Life has available to us through this product called Trip Wizard. Some of the features that it has, the reviews, the ratings, all those things that help you in finding a place to stay. Also, we're gonna give you some tips at the end of the video that will help you as you are trying to do your planning within Trip Wizard and won't make it such a big learning curve for you. Now, as I mentioned before, we are using this Trip Wizard software from RV Life to do all of our trip planning for our trip. And we have been using this for the last five years. And if you are not a member already, then you can use our discount code TIGNER25 to save 25% on your first year's membership. Here is a review of our map as it sits today and we have added a lot of things on here already and what we're going to do now is we're going to start using the things that are built into Trip Wizard to show you some of the flexibility that it has. Well we kind of showed you flexibility already. We want to show you all the cool things that it has that makes planning the trip out a lot easier. There's a lot of things here, and we've already showed you how to add things if they weren't here, but what about all the things that are here and the information that it contains? So one of the questions that we get asked is, you know, we want to know where all the Corps of Engineering campgrounds are, or all of the Thousand Trails campgrounds and things like that, or maybe who takes good SAM. If you look right here on the map above uh, our trip is a little trip tool, so it's a little wrench. And if I click on that, then the second option down, display pin preferences. If I click on that, this is where all that information is selected. Here's the most common things. Um, I usually don't do good SAM or KOA, so I just took those off. But you can see Thousand Trails is uh, one of the more common things that's uh, on there. But there's all kinds of different ones here, including you know our Canadian uh, campgrounds. Uh, we have Elks uh, RV places. We have um, different club ones. So you can see there's a lot of different ones here. And, you know, if we go back up here, I kind of skipped over this one, but right here is the Corps of Engineering campgrounds. So if we just highlight all the ones that we're interested in, the next thing that we do in this on this list is to go ahead and click on the sort order. And so we can sort accordingly how we want those to actually show up on our list of preferences. And then once we're done with that, then we select uh, the next option is to say show only preferred campgrounds or show all campgrounds. Now when I'm doing this I typically say show all campgrounds because I kind of really want to know everything that's in the area. I don't care if I'm a member or not. I just want to be able to see them and see that there's things there. And maybe if that's an area that we're going to be hitting a lot then maybe and there's a club there then maybe I want to join that club. So that's why I usually do that. I say show all campgrounds. But if you're doing specific things, for example, Corps of Engineering, and that's all you want to do, or military family uh, friendly camps, then you can select those options and then say just show those and then that's all that's going to show up 
when we tell uh, Trip Wizard to show us what's available in that area. Okay, so our information has been successfully updated. And now if we look over here on our map, we're just going to kind of drill in a little bit. And you can see how much time frame I have between these as I'm going down through here. And from this campground down to Richmond, Virginia, um, there's 7 hours and 48 minutes. Now, I typically set my um, range to be about 3 hours of driving per day. And I explained it in the past videos why I do that and how we do that. Uh, we have a number of videos that teach you um, how to set all that up. And that's just done through these trip tools. But if I have that set up already, I can go over here to map settings on the top right here. And if I click there, it brings up this um, list of uh, different things that's available to me. And one of these is driving radius. And so if I click right here, I have two options available for driving radius. One that just sees these circles and one that just follows the road basically any place that I can get based on my my preferences and I said three hour preference I'm just going to turn that on and I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to go ahead and select this campground so if I go ahead and click on that then you'll notice that it's kind of turned green here and if I go out here you'll notice I have a little green area here. This is basically saying based on these different roads that are within this circumference of this green whatever you want to call that. <laughs> um, these are the places I can go and so as I'm as you can see here this is the route that I'm driving and this is my three hour mark. So if I go up here now and I just click on this little tent right up here at the top right next to map settings then it turns on all the different things that I had selected that I wanted to see it shows all those here and you can see like this one for example is at the three hour mark so one of the cool things about trip wizard I mean this is pretty cool just being able to do this planning things out and kind of breaking these up accordingly and not having to guess so much but if you look over here to the right we have this research option available to you. So I'm going to kind of move this over a little bit because I want to still be able to see that. But I'm going to pop this out and you can see that as I move up and down here the little campgrounds are blinking around on the on the map right there. But these are showing you just the parks. There's 20 parks in the view right now. So I can just go all down through here and I can just see all those, right? I have the star ratings and everything here. So that's pretty cool. But the neat thing also is I can actually just click on one of these and it brings me into this screen that shows me all the information about this particular uh, campground so whichever one I'm interested I can click on that I come in here I give an overview of the campground the uh, phone number that you can go to their website if they happen to have one you can see the uh, satellite view of the thing if you want these three dollar signs it's a dollar uh, one dollar sign then it's usually within the ten to twenty dollar range if it's two dollars it's twenty to thirty three dollars you know thirty to forty on on up so the more the number of dollars that are on there the more expensive this particular stay would be uh, there's some other information here 180 sites it's got the this is the elevation uh, if we click on features these are all the things that are available in that particular site you know what they have available so they have little X's here when they don't have it. So you get a kind of a good idea what's going on here. But then if we do this reviews, these are reviews that we have as RV Life members, we have put these reviews in there after we've stayed at a park. You know, we stay there, we leave. What do you think of the park? And they ask all these different questions. And, you know, it's, it's, it's important to put in, you know, be very honest about it and to let other people know you know if you didn't have a good time for some reason then you need to put that in there because you know we're looking at that information to decide whether we want to stay at this park so this is where reviews are very very important as far as helping out your fellow RVer so you'll see that in this case there's 117 views and out of those 117 views we almost have a perfect five-star rating so as you look down through here there's different ratings but you'll notice here also it says when they stayed which is important hopefully it's been pretty soon um, and then the nightly price that they paid so you know you see those dollars on there and things like that but you know you can look down through here and you can get a pretty good idea 
you know that these are the prices that's being uh, charged there so a lot of things depend on for example if they have 50 amp hookups if they have multiple you know family members uh, if they want cable TV I mean you know if you ever stayed at a KOA everything is itemized and some of these parks are picking up on that and so you know that's why sometimes this will differ some people get a senior discount some people get a military discount so you know you, this at least gives you a good idea and then this is important here too tips and questions and answers so if you look here these are tips that other individuals have put in there that give you some pretty cool information about just stay in there places to maybe go see places to uh, visit or places to avoid <laughs> and this one doesn't have any questions or answers but you know if there's um, questions and answers about it they'll be listed over here on the right and then another cool thing is this weather thing oh and of course I just uh, happened to grab one that didn't most of them have weather information here so let's just get out of here for just a minute and let's go into another one let's say the Shawnee State Park and we'll go into weather and see what it has see this one works so this one has the average weather for the time of year that you're going to actually be there so this is really helpful and then it also shows the forecast over the next uh, few days and things uh, going ahead so this this portion for planning doesn't really do us much good unless it's pretty close to when we're going to be there but this can be really uh, you know helpful just being able to tell where that you know based on our trip time frame you know what kind of uh, weather we're going to expect while we're there you know in our particular case we like to be at least 80 degrees or less well I shouldn't say at least 80 degrees we, we prefer to stay below 80 degrees so more like 70 all the time and so this is why we look at this and kind of figure things out a little bit but that's just you know available to you through just clicking on these things here now another way to do it if you don't have this research up here is that if you just click on the actual campground that's listed out here you have these park details here and this brings up the same same information so uh, you can get to it either way now this is our park list so now if we click on the show filters you'll see that there's a list of different uh, items that we can filter on so let's say park types let's just do a drop down on that we can say whether commercial types, state parks Canadian national parks all this information will show up here and what we can do is we can go in here and select what we want to see so if I only want to see for example parks that are rated four stars and above then you can see that kind of took out so let's see if I say all you see that there's all these ones that are on the left right there if I click on this just the four stars right here you'll see some of those disappear so if they don't have at least a four star rating then I'm not going to have to worry about them you know and this is based on again us giving those ratings when we leave so uh, if there's issues at that park then we probably don't want to you know have other people go in there and have those same kind of issues so when we rate it then then it goes accordingly so and then if we look down here we have the different park reviews you know we've got uh, you know reviews in this case being how many of them uh, park features you know so it's you know it's kind of nice uh, that you can just filter out based on all this information it's all built right here in trip wizard at the very bottom here it shows four stars that's the one filter that I've applied here so far uh, if showers was important I put that on there then it puts that on there and these are all filters that are being applied to the list of uh, campgrounds that I want to look at so pretty powerful when it comes to the campgrounds and then at this point I can just click on the campground and I can just say add this to my trip so I want to go ahead and do that at that three hour mark I want to make sure that I pay attention to where I'm at over here on the the left so if I zoom out here just a little bit um, then I can see that that is my the one that's blinking there the the flying fin family so if I'm going to add this at that point then I want to add it to the trip and I'm going to look down through here until I find flying fin you know and you can see my trips pretty large so um, there's a lot to look through there but as I go down through here then let's see it's right in here it's really close right here flying fin family campground so if I put that on there and I say okay I'm gonna stay at least one night here then it automatically adds that to that portion of the trip and then it brings the map up again so if I go ahead and let's just minimize that research for a minute 
now it's moved my little diagram here over to the next section and so I can zoom in down here now whoops it's a problem if you have campgrounds on <laughs> so you can zoom in down here and now this is my three hour mark and so I can just keep moving and let's go ahead and turn the, the camps off there for a minute but I can keep moving around here to all my whole trip and get that all filled in and that hit that has been what I have done up here on this top section I just kept going along and adding things in there basically about three hours away from each other with this little mapping piece here it makes it really simple for you to you know put those in there and you can see here too if I was just going to be driving along instead of in my case I've got a lot of information in there a lot of stops I've done you don't have to I mean mine's very complicated for you to jump in and do it now that's pretty complicated but if you're just starting out you just say hey I'm at this particular point right now and I'm going to want to go out three hours and so then you go find three hours away and you put it on there and you just start building your map accordingly you don't um, you know and you can just build it based on where things take you you know we were looking at quirky things you know as we go up through the different states and we're looking at quirky things then our route starts meandering around different areas because there were some quirky things we wanted to see and so we'll you know still try to stay within that three hour range but we'll find camps that are closer to the quirky things we want to see. Now another thing, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for right now. So we don't need the driving radius on there right now. So I'm just going to turn that off. You can see it's just easy to turn that on and off as you know anytime you want. I'm going to bring up the research thing again. Over here on the right I have, we've been talking about parks. But there's also points of interest. And so I can go into here and I can type in different points of interest here and in this case I've got different fuel stations so so I'm going to just uh, zoom in here really quick one of the places that we'll be going through here is Chattanooga we love that area and there's all kinds of cool things there so I'm just going to show you how this works but here are all the different gas stations you know for example if you are uh, using uh, you know a pilot card or you know if you're a good SAM member you get five cents off then pilots might be a place that you want to go or flying J's so you can have those on there um, if and you'll see that they're showing up over here on the left and then also if I go down here a little ways one of the things that's out here these are amusement parks and things that's showing up so if I click on those those uh, mall jump how about Chattanooga Ducks Let's get in here where we were, oh, right here at Lookout Pass. This is where last year we were, um, Glen Falls Trail. You know, you can see that here's the Incline Railroad that we did the, or this was actually two years ago, uh, we did that. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, and then right over here is the Tennessee Aquarium. So I just start putting all those in here and I can see what those different, um, you know, items are available in that area. So that's another thing that's, pretty cool is you don't necessarily have to go look for quirky things some of these things are actually built into trip wizard for you to find and go ahead and add those to your trip and you know again like this Tennessee Aquarium if I want to add that to my trip I just add it to my trip the little tip I gave you in the last video was what we do is we just take and we start making a list in the comments section of the entry where we're staying in that area we just give put all the comments of things that we want to see so when we're in that area we can pull that up and then make you know reservations and things like that and worst case is you know we do like we showed in the last video where uh, when we were up at Banff if we have all these reservations we have to do then we can actually just create a whole nother trip and just put all those in so that's pretty cool so I've cleared our point of interest here the next thing I wanted to show you was hazards so if I go over here to hazards and click on that low clearance this is really important if you stay on the main roads then you usually don't have that problem but look at here the, this one here like this area here how about ring gold if we come down through here see we're good here on the main road but if we get off here to go get gas and things like that then there is a low clearance warning right here and so it's it's good to be aware of those and then over here the same thing is it's not the uh, main roads that's having the issues it's the little side streets might get off and decide to go get gas or there's some quirky thing that we're going to go to or whatever uh, then you know that might be an issue uh, one stop that we had in Colorado we were going to go and check out uh, a national park well as we started digging into a little bit there was a little tunnel that you had to go through before you got there and the side clearance was 10 feet and the very middle of the, the tunnel 
was about 11 feet. Well, no RV <laughs> is going to be going through that. And you had to go around the back side. And so it's good to be able to see that and be aware of it. And this just has it built in. And I know other things have some you know, low clearance things that you can find on the internet, some different apps and things too. But this is just built in here too. So it's all just right here for you to use. So that makes it pretty nice just to kind of search those things out a little bit. So you can see that we're building out our trip for this summer. Uh, there, you know, it just keeps getting more and more complicated. You don't have to do it all at once. You just add little pieces here and there, little pieces here and there. And the cool thing is that by the time you get done, you have the masterpiece done. And this has everything there. It's taken care of it. Any reservations you had in there, uh, they're not being duplicated. Everything is being managed all in one spot. You don't make a you know, a mistake and have some issues down the road. Now let's take a minute and talk about a couple tips that may help you out as you're doing your trip planning. So tip number one is if we look here at our trip that we have set up right now, you can see that we have a lot of things on here and some will be, you know, we'll keep and some we may not, whatever, but you know, as we're going through here, we don't want to lose this. So if we go over here to this uh, wrench up here again, and we click on that, one of the options that we have is down here towards the bottom, and it says copy this trip. So this is a good way to make a backup of your trip anytime you're going to be making any major changes, like you're going along, we said, you know, we always, you know, our trip never ends up being the same at the end. Well, as we're going through the trip, we decide, well, let's go over to this area of the country, or let's do this, or whatever, then the thing what we do is we make a copy of the trip that we currently are working on and we take that copy and then make some changes and to test out our theory as to do we want to go here or not. But then there's also just having a backup that's really nice just in case you accidentally delete something. At least you have a backup to go to. So this little option right here, copy this trip, gives you the ability just to make a copy of it and you can just be something you're going to work with and test some things or it could just be a backup so a lot of times I'll just say backup and this um, was my summer 2024 trip so backup summer 2024 and then I'll usually put a like an incremental number here or the date um, so and then I just say copy now that will go through the make the trip and you'll notice here that it put this name here for my trip name and all the other things that were a part of that trip are still here so I just say save that it now creates a copy of it and saves it and that becomes my active copy so you'll notice up here at the top now it says backup summer 2024-1 and it's currently a tentative trip so I've got this all in here I can start making changes and if I delete things or whatever and I mess up or I don't want what I got then I can always go back to the old one so that's really helpful, and I've used that a lot. Now, tip number two is, we kind of mentioned here, this tentative. So you see that the trip I have right now is tentative. And if you go into this little wrench again, and you go into trip settings, so your very first option here, you'll notice that in the middle of the screen here, I have trip status. If I down click on this down arrow, then I can have it be my active trip, a tentative trip, or an archive trip. So once you get done with your, your big vacation or trip of whatever you're doing, you can just archive that trip and then you have a copy of it in case you ever want to go back to look at some of the fun places that you went before. You still have that uh, particular map where you uh, visited so you have all that information available to you. Uh, and so you just archive that and then it's out of your way, you don't have to mess with it. Tentative is that, you know what, I'm thinking about doing something, but I don't want it to show up on my active role of uh, list of things that I'm doing. So I'm just going to play around and do things. And then once I'm done, I'm going to make it active. And so in this particular case, our trip has been tentative. We're going to go ahead and just click on this active now and save it. And then once that's all saved and reloads, then you'll notice up here now, it doesn't say tentative or archive on here anymore. Active trip just shows the actual name. And I can go in here and change this name. So if this, I decided, you know, what, guess what, this backup trip that I was messing around with is really what I want to do, then all I do is go back in here into trip settings and, and I just change the trip name right here. 
and so and then just resave it again so it works out really nice and those are two tips that you'll use a lot and so it's pretty cool to know about those things and it's pretty simple it makes it really easy well that completes this video number three of our three video series uh, talking about our trip planning for 2024 there's a lot of information here at least now you can go back and just look at those and dive into those and just jump around in there and look at the pieces that will work best for you um, we appreciate you following us and watching these give us some comments you know give us a thumbs up too <laughs> but uh, make some comments you know if there's things in here that maybe i said wrong or maybe there's better ways to do it things like that uh, please make some comments help out the community that's all what it's all about so anyway thanks for watching and we'll just uh, hope to see you down the road somewhere and if not then it'll be on our next video hopefully so you guys all take care mm -hmm.